Hello, hello, my viewers. Welcome to Big Voice on the Mic. I am Sarah J. Oko, and I am super, super excited about our guest for today. He is an amazing personality, and when I say amazing, I mean it. But before I introduce him to you, let's take a quick break. We would be right back. We'll be giving you nothing but great jams. I got DJ Bosch at the background mixing, spinning, and dishing out hot tracks. And this is how we do. It's the weekend. Go out there, have so much fun. Don't drink and drive. Welcome back. Talking about our guest for today, he is a really big voice on the mic. He is a broadcaster, a voiceover actor, and a music producer. I am talking of no other person than Mr. Godwin Godons, aka Mr. G. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, Mr. G. It's good to have you in my studio, in my space. Same here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Yeah. Today, the script has changed because Usually, I'm the one doing the interview, but now, <laughs> reverse is the <laughs> And case. I am so honored to be interviewing you today. You're welcome. Thank you. So, Mr. J, can you tell us about yourself? Let's get to know you. All right, my name is Godwin Adogame. I am from Edo State. I was born in Kaduna. I spent most of my childhood and my teenage years in Kaduna until we moved to Abuja. I'm from a family of just two. I have a younger sister and um, I love um, life. I just enjoy, you know, being free, enjoy music, enjoy anything that just makes me happy. That's me for you. Wow. So talking about you becoming a really big voice on the mic today, was that what you've always wanted from childhood? Funny, um, not really. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would uh, be in broadcasting. I actually studied uh, geology in the university. Uh, a friend of mine who's late, who uh, was a broadcaster, Mecca Akirijola, simply known as Mecca, back in the day he used to work with uh, one of the radio stations here in Abuja. Um, but before I got into it, we always used to just drive around town, just do stuff, and I always accompanied him on any of his trips, see if he wants to go do voicing mm -hmm. and all of that. So he went to a particular studio to do voicing, and that was like, I think my first time being in the studio. After he finished for the booth, they were done and I just walked into the booth. I wanted to have a feel of what it felt like being in the studio. And I just started goofing around uh, with the mic. I did not know the mic was on. I was just busy going, hey, it's me and this is that. Uh, the Federal Minister of Health wants the smokers are liable to die young. I was just fooling around. And I never knew people at the control well, section listener. could see me and could listen and they heard everything I was doing. So uh, after a while, I noticed there was this strange attention towards me. So I looked up to see what was going on, and everybody were at awe. And they were like, what? You have a great voice, man. You're the kind of person we're looking for. Come read this script. And I was like, hey, I've never done this in my life. Hey, I don't know how to do this. I was like, man, you just did a wonderful job. Do it. I collected the script, went through it, and, you know, voiced it. And that was how my journey started in voiceovers. Wow. From somebody here, the voiceover I did, from there people started passing my phone numbers around, I started getting calls, and I thought to myself, hey, this is not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I just go into the booth, read something, just go, hey, it's Mr. G, and la la la, or ladies and gentlemen, welcome, and I started getting paid. That was how it started. And from there, it went on to joining my friend, who's now late, God bless his soul, at uh, the radio station. I started doing voiceovers for them, where you go, this is, da, 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 da. tune in, we'll be right back, and things like that. So I started doing that for a while, and I slowly started um, co-hosting with one of uh, the presenters at the radio station. I would read a book and explain what I read. I think it was till date I mix up the name of the book think like a man, act like a woman, something of that yeah. nature. So I was always reading that book. I think it was over every Wednesday. I would read the book, explain, the host would now ask me questions and we just started treating relationship uh, issues. And that was how my journey into broadcasting started. Yeah, that's awesome. So what are the challenges you face on the job? Well, the challenges, um, it's the time consuming, it, you know, you. The, the thing about the job is when you're off air 
it does not mean you are out of the job so to speak or you're not working when you're off air it means you need to put in more work you need to do your research on getting stories you need to know what's trendy you need to update yourself constantly so in not the job does not stop or end when you close or turn off your mic and you're done for the day you're going home you're driving around the neighborhood you're looking at things you're trying to constantly get something that would make you relevant the next day when you come to the office so for me that's like you know for for some people with regular nine to five once you close from the office that is it you can come back tomorrow and continue from when you stop yeah. but as a broadcaster once you close from the studio work continues because you need to be aware you it's need to be receptive like exactly you need to be careful to get everything that happens around you because it's a potential story it is something worth talking about you could be driving and somebody would just act unruly on the road that's something you need to come talk about the next day you're having mm -hmm. a conversation somebody says something you have to note it of if it's friends. radio worthy to come talk about so that's how you get relevant and that's just the uh, you know for me i would say maybe that's just the the crux of the job let me put it like wow. that that's amazing well for now we will be going on a short break so stay tuned we will be right back welcome back so then that brings me to this next question we would like to know more of you so would you tell us are you married yes i'm married um to a very lovely lady we actually went to the same school and funny story about her is uh, the first time I saw her at um, close to the girls hostel in school the very first words I ever said to her the very first time I met her was you're a very lovely lady and I will marry you you're my wife and she laughed about it six years how many years after how many like ten I can't remember uh, she said I do and today she's wow. my wife yeah that's awesome <laughs> okay so let's get to know how do you manage work with family considering the fact that broadcasting is now a uh, it's not just a profession mm -hmm. it's a lifestyle so how do you manage it with family well i think i found a way to marry it with my job and my wife totally understands that um the job demands me uh, constantly sometimes being in the studio or at some events or if they're opening or launchings and things like that, I always have to go around there. So the few times or the time that I get to spend with my family, I always make sure it is a quality time. Play with my daughter, I make sure I sit with my wife and we talk about things, we catch up, you know, tells me about what, uh, tells me things about her office and, you know, happenings around and all of that. So I have found a way to creating a balance between my, my work and family. So uh, for me, I think it's, it's it's uh, it goes goes well five and six so i think i found a way to actually marry the both together so we're good oh that's mm. awesome so um let's get to know what's your biggest motivation my biggest motivation in life is um i love to be challenged um anything that's a difficulty for me i always try to see how i can conquer it so i always try to do any and everything i find myself if um, riding a bicycle is a problem, I would make sure I ride that bicycle <laughs> 10 times to make sure I get it. If um, I just love challenges. I love things that would engage me and challenge me. So for me, a new task is my challenge in life. Let's get to know this also, because we have lots of radio stations. We want to know how you get your audience glued to your station. Well, for, for us, our format works for us. Uh, we here at the Cool Station, we play urban music and uh, contemporary music, music that appeal to young, the young, uh, the young ones out there, the young at heart as well. And we always try to make radio more of like a personal thing. I always envision it like this. Each time I talk on air, I try to see how I make it. I narrow it down to one person, so I just don't make it sound like I'm talking to a group of people. At the end of the day. Each and every person who listens to me, who personalized their message, uh, the message or whatever it is I'm talking about. And by doing so, it feels like it's a personal thing. That's why sometimes when I say some things on air, people send me messages and say, wow, it felt like you were talking to me. And for me, that's the satisfaction, I think. That's what we try to do. 
making radio a, a, a personal companion and if you can do that and if you achieve that then you'll be able to actually carve a niche for yourself on air or as a radio station like we do right here at the cool station well, that's really inspiring be your advice to the young ones out there aspiring to become broadcaster, voiceover actors, music producer. I mean, you're a whole lot in <laughs> one. That's huge. <laughs> well, just be yourself. Uh, these days when you hear radio or you hear people who are trying to be radio presenters, they try to sound like who they are not. Uh, try to sound some type of way. Try to pick up accents that um, not really theirs. Just be you. Just master the language and what I mean by master the language, find the simplest way of communicating. You don't have to big, use big vocabularies in communicating. Some people do that and I, sadly anytime you do that you lose your audience. It's like I said initially, if you make it sound like you're speaking to one person and you're trying to communicate, then you know, you'll be able to carve a niche or establish yourself in the industry for voiceover acting go online look for courses try to read constantly add value to yourself um, challenge yourself if you hear something try to sound know your voice texture try to build on things you know uh, are challenging to you give yourself tasks uh, put in create steps where you need to climb achieve and move on to the next stage uh, until you do this, you will not be able to hone your skills as a broadcaster. Read a lot. Try to know a little a bit about everything. Listen to uh, other OAPs. Do not copy them. Learn what they do and create your own style. Thank you, Mr. J. It's been an amazing section. I mean, I've learned a few things to better my own self too. So all thanks to you. It's Mr. G and I'm chilling right here, a big voice on the mic. If I have to say anything about my life that is true, factual, or maybe an inspiration. If it's not a big voice on the mic, then you know something is wrong. If you heard it, seen it, watch it on TV, know it's big voice on the mic. And I'm Big G on the mic, signing out. See you next time. Love ya. I'm sure you learned one or two things, because I did. And for all those aspiring to become presenters, to become um, voiceover actors and the likes, you heard him. You just need to be yourself. Simplicity is the key. Stay tuned. Same time, same station. But until next time, I remain your host, Sarah J. Oko.